The Dow pulling back from its record high, still heading for its best week of the year, though. The major averages all on track for healthy gains this week following Wednesday's FOMC meeting. Chair Powell reassuring investors that rate cuts are likely on the way. Joining me now to discuss is Robert Kaplan, former Dallas Fed president. He is also former vice chair at Goldman Sachs. Uh, Robert, it's great to see you. Uh, it's interesting the market had, you know, net positive reaction, uh, considering that uh, the statement and message were almost identical to what we saw last time, right? So in other words, not much change in the Fed stance. It feels as if policymakers are wanting to make use of the luxury of time uh, to maybe allow inflation to get a little bit better. But what did you pull out of, of what Chair Powell had to say that's most relevant uh, to the outlook? I'd say uh, the statement and his comments were pretty much as expected. He's setting up the option to cut in June, but leaving them flexibility in case they don't like the information and data they see over the next few months. Uh, I think he reaffirmed what they said back in December. Uh, but, but I think the Fed's going to want to turn over a few more cards, and he gave them the flexibility to do that. The market may also be reacting to his comments on the balance sheet which actually may be more significant for the market in that it's clear the Fed is moving toward slowing the runoff of the balance sheet uh, over the next few months. And I think that actually might be as or more significant than the statement and the comments on interest rates. Right. So the, I, I guess he said essentially soon that they will likely have a plan uh, for tapering the quantitative tightening. And, and, and perhaps that was a little bit sooner than, than people were expecting that to be uh, on the radar. Seemed as if maybe the market did take a little bit of heart in that. Uh, but bigger picture, it feels as if um, the Fed, the, the committee is pretty wedded to this idea that there's just a lot of room between where rates are and where inflation is, even if it's not near target. So uh, almost like there's an urgency maybe to get started as a matter of just, you know, normalizing, getting that process going, even if it's not really to explicitly help uh, the economy. Yeah, listen, the, the, the Fed is very mindful of the fact they probably were late this cycle in raising rates and starting to run off the balance sheet, maybe as much as 20 months late. I think they're now thinking about the fact they don't want to overstay keeping rates high for too long. The issue that's making this more difficult, though, is you still have very substantial fiscal spending on unspent ARPA money, American Rescue Act money, Inflation Reduction Act projects, Infrastructure Act projects, which are stimulating demand for labor as the Fed is trying to cool demand. And I think that's creating resiliency, particularly in the service sector and on wages. On the other hand, you've had a couple of positive developments. You've had more labor supply growth, probably from immigration. And productivity looks like it's a little higher, which means maybe we can grow a little faster with lower inflation. But these are cross currents. And, and I think it's still unclear which of these cross currents are, is going to be more dominant, which is why they're kicking the can at least a little bit longer. Sure. Um, I, I guess there's even another uh, overlay on all those cross currents that you mentioned, which is the parts of the economy that would or are most responsive to higher interest rates to restrain inflation are the, the goods part, the housing. It's the stuff that's already maybe felt the that's effect, right. whereas it's just unclear if services inflation can be you know, addressed in a similar way by keeping rates up here. Yeah, that, that's right. I agree with that. So w it's not like it's not like tight monetary policy isn't working, as you just said. It's affecting real estate. It's affecting the desire to keep inventory. It's affecting banks' willingness to lend uh, to small business. So it's having an effect. Uh, the issue is uh, there's a counterforce, which is fiscal spending, deficit fiscal spending on projects, which is resilient. It's not stopping goods disinflation. But it probably is making service sector inflation a little more resilient. And uh, so the Fed is getting ready to take action, but it's not committing to it by any means. And I think they'd be wise. And if I were there, I'd want to I'd want to withhold judgment for a little longer just to see how this is all going to shake out. Yeah, no, they're probably uh, glad to have uh, two or three months uh, before they're they expected are. to do anything whatsoever uh, just to see how things shake out. Uh, Robert, great to have you. Thank you very much. Robert Kaplan. Great to see you, Mike.